So I had no idea that this process was going to be so expensive. Things are moving along though, it's time for another Canada update. Hi everybody, welcome back to Bramski Vlogs. Matt here with another video, hope you're all doing well. This channel documents my experiences of working in the mountains and hopefully I will be heading to Canada for my next adventure. To do that though, I need to get hold of an IEC visa to accompany my job offer that I already have. Now, if this is the first video that you are watching on this channel, the first video that you're watching about my adventure, my journey to get to Canada, then there's a couple of things you have already missed. So I've created a playlist for you up here to get you up to speed with things. Now let's not waste any more time and let me catch you up with what's been going on lately. First things first, I made a mistake. As you recall in my last video, I had entered the visa pool and I was led to believe that I was waiting further instruction from the Canadian government. Well, I was wrong. Um, and I discovered this because I was anxious and I was impatient. And at times the internet can actually be a really, really useful tool. So on Facebook, there is actually a group dedicated solely to the IEC working holiday visa. And I just popped a question in there to ask really typically how long is the wait time once you enter the pool. Someone came back and it transpired that the next step was that I had to actually email my my valid job offer, a copy of that in a particular format to a certain email address. Now, I got confused because I was following a guide with regards to submitting the documents, which was one step ahead. So I jumped forward, which is typical of me. So getting things back on track, I have now submitted my job offer. So only six days later, I received an invitation inviting me to apply for the visa. It's been an exciting and a busy week this week, which leads me on to my next point, applying for the visa. So this involves me submitting a lot of documentation, which includes family information, up-to-date CV, copy of the passport, a digital photo, and also police certificate. I then had to go also into some depth with regards to the places that I'd lived and the jobs that I've done previously. So a lot of data entry, and Facebook once again came to my aid because I believe that a police certificate was just an up-to-date DBS check, something that is quite common for new jobs here within the UK. But the certificate that they want is specific for visa and immigration purposes and the only way I could do that is getting that from the criminal records office the ARCO here in the UK so on top of that I voluntarily submitted my vaccine passport just in the event that it might speed up my application so that has all gone now to the Canadian government and they received my application on Saturday so the next step that I found out this morning is that the Canadian authorities require my biometrics. So I have to go get my fingerprint scanned and also get my photo taken. Now to do this, I have to travel down to the beautiful capital of the UK, which is London. Um, and I'll be doing that tomorrow, which actually will be today for you guys when this video comes out. And I'll try and document as much of that as I can whilst I'm down there in London. So the next video hopefully might be a bit more of a travel vlog style feel to it. Finally, let's talk about costs. In the last 14 days, I have spent £336 on this whole application. It's a lot. Let's break it down a little bit. I'm going to have to use some of my notes here. But um, firstly, I had to spend £341 Canadian dollars on my application. Now that was $156 as a participation fee, $100 as an open work permit holder fee, and then $85 for the biometrics fee. All of that was included to make 341 Canadian dollars. Now that works out at about 196 British pounds, give or take. Next, I paid 95 pounds for my police certificate so to get all of that protest now admittedly i picked the more expensive option there was one for about 45 pounds but it would take longer and i didn't want to risk anything with time scales and as you can tell already with this i want to move things along quite quickly so i was prepared to pay about 50 pounds extra lastly i paid 44 pounds 40 for my train journey to go down to london tomorrow um, so it's adding up and I haven't even looked at insurance yet. 
um, and I've also got things like accommodation and some other particular items to consider. So there's in my mind, I've already sort of started to think about the planning financially to be able to afford things, which as I touched on in a previous video is actually going to be really important being able to sort of afford my time out there, especially as I want to be out there for a full two years. I'm going to have to sort of really be uh, on the money as it were with this. So that is another update of my pursuit of the International Experience Canada visa. I'm really happy with how things are progressing at the moment. Seems to be heading in the right direction, so keeping my fingers and my toes crossed. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video, and if you have any questions about the process, please, please do put them in the comment section below, because I will get around to answering those uh, later on during the week. Don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to the channel. We've had a few more people join recently. It's great to have you on board, um, so thank you for those who have subscribed. Look after yourself guys and I will see you next time.